Um, next, uh, I'm going to be speaking again about uh, best current operational practices and really just giving a look at these efforts around the world. As I mentioned in the introduction, uh, this is one of the things that uh, our team is working on at the Internet Society to help foster, to help start these efforts and help get them going. Uh, these are really community efforts. They're not necessarily uh, an ISOC project per se. Our project is really to get them going and get them started. So first, obviously, the, the initial question is what is a BCOP? What do I mean when I talk about a best current operational practice? Uh, these are intended to be living documents that describe the best operational practices currently used or currently agreed upon by subject matter experts. Um, so really this is uh, something that the community agrees on that the best way to implement EBGP or the best way to implement OSPF or the best way to set up uh, your network filters. They are common technologies, common deployment issues that uh, engineers get together and talk about and agree on. Um, and again, the, the living document part I think is very important because obviously these change over time. As new technologies come out, as um, equipment advances, as we learn things, um, these, these uh, practices change. The reason uh, that we're involved in this, the, the problem as we see it, is that uh, today operator knowledge tends to be kind of confined to small groups. There are folks who know a lot about one thing and maybe not other areas. And there are people who are either new to network engineering or maybe in a newer, um, newer network or a newer company that may not have access to this information. And of course, meetings like this where people come and present, we have experts um, who come and present on topics. And I think the information is exactly what we're talking about, but it's maybe hard to find. Sometimes these slides are, when you, if you do just a search on the internet, you may be able to find some, but it's hard to tell if they're up to date. It's also hard to tell if it's one person's opinion or if it's really the agreed upon de facto standard, if it's really the best way to do something. So the question is, how do I find up to date, relevant information when I need it? And the, the BCOP solution to that problem is an open, transparent, bottom up, and community led process for engineers to write down these practices for other engineers to read. So it's for engineers, by engineers, uh, where everyone is welcome to participate, whether that's writing documents or reviewing documents, or even just saying, hey, nope, that, that doesn't quite work in our network, and, and here's why. And it's all based on what we call the 80-20 model. It's really the idea that the majority of cases wins out, that's the best current operational practice, and the corner cases, or the things that are maybe a little bit different from network to network, uh, maybe called out, but aren't necessarily the main point of the documents. It's really the things that work the best for the most amount of people. So I in the past couple of years, the Internet Society has been working on helping to start these efforts around the world, basically doing what I'm doing now, coming and sharing information about the idea of how this might work and, and allowing people to, to jump off from there. There's a, a link here um, on our Deploy360 website that talks about the BCOP efforts around the world that we keep up to date. Um, but really briefly right now, we see uh, in Africa, there is a BCOP group that was started within the AFNOG context, um, being led by Douglas Anyango, and uh, they're moving along. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the details of each one of these in the coming slides. Um, here in Asia, there is a BCOP task force that was started at, uh, at JANOG, um, which was co-chaired by Sichi Kawamura and uh, Yoshinobu Matsuzaki. Unfortunately, they're not here today, um, but I think maybe some of you are know them and, and can talk to them in more detail about these things. Uh, also, NZNOG is, has started a BCOP effort led by Dean Pemberton. There's no full region, Asia-Pacific BCOP effort uh, underway right now, um, so that's something that maybe you want to think about. It could be something that, uh, that you or, or colleagues may want to uh, initiate, uh, or maybe not, maybe there's reasons not to, um, but, uh, but it may be a good idea as other regions see it um, as useful so far. In Europe, there is a BCOP task force at RIPE, which is now co-chaired by Benno Overunder and Jan Zors. In Latin America, there's also a early stages BCOP effort that has been started there uh, within the LACNOG context. Um, Luis Bablino and Pedro R. Torres are, are leading that right now. And in North America, uh, the NANOG BCOP committee has been established. Uh, I'm one of the co-chairs along with Aaron Hughes. 
And we'll look a little bit at, at each one of these and, and where they sit and, uh, and what's going on there. So in Africa, um, they've had a couple of birds of a feather meetings, kind of informal gatherings to talk about the issues and get it going. Uh, their current focus is to get a mailing list up and going. Right now they're just talking about these things on the Afro, uh, AFNOG mailing list. They also would like to create the repository for documents um, and get a couple of drafts ready for the next meeting. There will be a session um, at AFRONIC 21, which is coming up at the end of this month, actually. The current document that they are working on in Africa is an IPv6 questions and answers, like a frequently asked question uh, document for issues specific to Africa. There are some things about um, the networks in Africa that make um, certain things a little bit unique there, and they want to focus on those pieces, kind of a regional focus on IPv6 deployment. The next group, uh, just alphabetically here, is the RIPE BCOP Task Force. Um, they're a little bit more established now. They've been uh, working at this a little bit longer. There's a uh, website there where you can find information on the charter and their, their intended scope, and there's a mailing list as well. They're also working on several documents right now. Uh, IPv6 troubleshooting for residential help desks is a document aimed to help make it easier to deploy IPv6 by providing a kind of an easy to read chart of how to troubleshoot typical problems that a residential user might call in with. So if you turn on IPv6 for residential broadband users, one of the fears right now is that you won't be able to handle those calls, right? Your, your first line technical support may not handle that. And this is uh, aimed to uh, address that fear and provide that information. They're working on a document on DNSSEC, uh, basically operational practices for authoritative name servers. So basically a how to deploy DNSSEC, the best current operational practices today. They're also working on a document um, talking about uh, best current operational practices for BGP. This one is interesting because there's currently three different groups working on similar documents. Right now they're kind of all advancing in parallel and then we'll find some coordination at the end and kind of bring them together, we hope. Because uh, one of the things about this is that even though there are regional efforts working on these documents, which I think helps with time zones, it's easier to have phone calls with folks who are closer to you. Uh, culturally, we understand each other easier in, in probably groups that are regionally focused. Um, language and those kind of things all fit together there. But obviously, the internet is a global medium. And for the most part, we expect these best current operational practices to be the same the world over. In Latin America, there is also a BCOP effort. As I said, it's, it's in the early stages, uh, just like Africa is. Um, they asked LACNOG to set up a web page there, and LACNOG has provided them, or LACNIC has provided them with a mailing list. So there's a mailing list if you're interested. Uh, most of the conversations there happen in Spanish, which again is one of the reasons for the regionalization. They're still talking about whether they'll have an official language of Spanish, Portuguese, or English. That's one of the things they're currently debating. Um, and they just had uh, a conversation about this whole process in Santiago. Uh, we were there for the ION, as well as LACNIC and LACNOG, and I was able to participate. They're working on one document right now, which is their development process, which really talks about how they will work on these documents, how to build consensus, how to judge consensus, uh, how to bring in subject matter experts to write the documents and so forth. One of the most established groups right now, just because it was the first one to start and has had a little bit more time to get going, is the NANOG BCOP effort. Um, there's a few websites here if you want to learn more. Um, uh, the charter itself and the list of members. Also the list of BCOPs that have been published. There are a couple that we've been able to publish already, two or three. There's a few in progress. I think we have five right now that are in progress and I'll touch on those quickly. And then of course the mailing list also. So one of the first documents, um, this is actually a document that has already been published, but is now uh, being updated. So again, hearkening back to that idea of living documents, where we don't want to let these stagnate. Um, the Public Peer and Exchange Participant, BCOP, is really about network operators and the best current practices for um, be becoming a member or, or, or operating with a exchange point, right? Um, operating at an exchange point. There's the document currently covers a little bit of how to run an exchange point and a little bit of how to participate at an exchange point. And this update aims to move that specifically to looking at how to participate at an exchange point. And there's another document 
um, actually just in the very early stages in the ripe region, that's gonna talk about a little bit more about how to operate an IXP. Um, it's being put together by some of the uh, Internet Exchange uh, Federation. This is the second um, group that's also working on a uh, BGP configuration BCOP. And again, at the end of the day, these will kind of all merge back together. Uh, this one's focused on eBGP specifically and how to configure and turn up a session. It's kind of a eBGP 101, the very basics of how to do this. Another document um, that's being worked on is Ethernet OAM, the Operations Administration and, and Maintenance uh, for Ethernet, uh, which is a fairly new topic in the last few years. And this document aims to kind of bring some of that together in a, in a kind of one place to find the very basics of how to start looking at introducing Ethernet OAM into your network. Uh, Anti-DDoS, um, so again, as we talked about, there's threats on the network, obviously, and one of the biggest threats to many networks and their customers is a denial of service attack, and so this document looks at uh, how to prevent those. A related document is more specific to um, stopping IP address spoofing. Currently, I think many people get pointed to BCP38, which is a good document that was published by the IETF, but hasn't been fully implemented. Um, and th there's many reasons why, and some of those are the fact that some vendor equipment isn't capable of doing it in ways that network operators would like. And so this anti-spoofing document is kind of focused on that, looking at known vendor bugs, problems in, in software and hardware that may be preventing the implementation of anti-spoofing measures, and also looking at other anti-spoofing measures beyond just the ingress filtering that's talked about in BCP38. Uh, as I mentioned, the last group I want to talk about is the, the Janog BCOP group, which is still um, just kind of forming up. Um, they're working on two documents, the EBGP best practices. This is the third one, the third group looking at BGP, um, best current operational practices. And also another one, which I think is interesting, uh, many of us uh, as network operators have uh, either ourselves or colleagues who travel to conferences such as, such as Janog to uh, discuss these issues. Um, and obviously, one of those things we do is while we're there is not just participate in the conference, but many times we have to work and operate the networks back at home. And so that Wi-Fi network becomes very important. And so the second document being worked on is a look at how to plan, build, and run a conference Wi-Fi network, something that um, many of us uh, often use. Again, one of the big things here is this is a lot of information that I think many of us have and maybe don't think is special. Uh, some of these things are, you know, if you've been a network engineer for three, four, five, especially maybe 10 years, there are things you know that are just common sense to you. They're very easy for you, um, things you do every day, things that, uh, you know, troubleshooting or configuring these things, maybe even second nature to a lot of us. But there are other pieces of network engineering or, or operating the internet that, uh, that you don't know about. And so the idea is to share that knowledge between all of us. So we're trying to build a list of, of ideas or topics. Um, again, there's a URL at the top here um, where we're trying to kind of keep a running list of some topics that have come up, some questions that people have asked. There's a few on this, on this page here, but there's many, many more already listed on that page and also in, in, in probably in all of us. Um, so, you know, the next steps, where are we going from here? From the ISOC side, we're gonna continue to try and bootstrap these new efforts. We're gonna keep trying to get them up and running, get new efforts started where they, where, where they are needed. And obviously, we wanna promote the development of new BCOP documents. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit, I think. As I said, many of these things, um, one of the hardest parts has been getting people to realize that they have this knowledge that needs to be shared. Because when you know something, it's, it's, it's easy. Um, and when you don't, you, you need to know it. But um, many of us have these ideas that we need to share. We'll review and update the existing BCOP documents to ensure they don't get stale. And uh, uh, we're also looking now at, at global coordination. As I mentioned, the regional efforts make it very easy to um, communicate and get documents started, but really these need to be global documents. And in the most cases, um, the internet should work the same here in Japan as it does uh, in Singapore or the United States or, or France. And that's where you come in. Um, I'd like to uh, invite all of you really to participate. Um, you can contribute to an existing draft. There are documents in progress right now 
that may need your attention, the ones I listed through. If any of those topics are things you know about, you may want to review the document and provide comments or text or, or even just questions. Uh, also, ideas for new drafts. If there are things that you'd like to understand better, something maybe that you're tasked with deploying and you're not exactly sure what the best way to do it is, um, those questions are exactly what we need as the seeds for new documents. Or of course, you could kick off a new document. If you have a topic that, uh, that you know about, that you're an expert in, feel free to uh, you know, contact uh, one of these groups and, and start writing that document and finding other experts um, to collaborate with. And then finally, the last thing is, uh, we could start a uh, local or regional BCOP effort. There's a local one here in Japan, I think, that's, that's underway, uh, but maybe a regional effort for the Asia-Pacific region might be something that's interesting, perhaps. If you have any questions or want more information, again, I, I put our website, our, our email address here again, deploy360 at isoc.org. Um, we're very welcome um, to answer questions or, or make introductions or, or whatever it takes to help move this along. Uh, with that, I'd really like to take any questions, if there are any. Please. So, can I ask uh, my question in Japanese? Okay. Hi, it's NTT no Fujisaki to Moshimasu. Kokoen, arigatou gozaimashita. It's the first time I've been talking about this topic. It's the first time I've been talking えっと、他の地域のBコープ活動にジョインすることが、他の地域のドキュメントをリファーすることはできるのでしょうかというのは、あの、ライプでやってるようなVDoc Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, these, uh, all the regions are open for participation to anyone who wants to. Um, there is, uh, for the ripe one in particular, if I scroll back to the ripe list here, um, it's being discussed on, on this mailing list, the, the BCOP um, at ripe.org mailing list. If you were to join that mailing list, if you want to get fully involved, or uh, again, you can email deploy360 and we'll put you in touch. I can send you a copy of the document and put you in touch with the folks who are working on it. And that's true for all of these documents that are in progress in any of the groups. Uh, all of the groups are open to participation from anywhere. And many of them actually are already, um, have participants from, from all over the world um, being involved. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's me uh, from JPNIC again. Again, I'll speak in Japanese. <laughs> えっと、藤崎さんが先ほどコメントされたことと関連するんですけれど、やっぱりこうアップデートしてもらって、あの、議論しているメールリストフルに全部をの結構大変だと思うんですよね。なので、例えばそういったグローバルなコーディネーションを目的としたメールリストなのか、なんかちょっとオンラインのプラットフォームなのかがあると、あ、こんな議論してるん
or something that maybe the IETF could get involved in. We're still looking at those possibilities, um, but that's absolutely something that's in progress right now. Because uh, I think you're right, it's it's um, it's it's not very fun to have to be a member of five different mailing lists. Um, but you do; it is something that is relevant globally. I think absolutely. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you.